a lot of things are happening behind the scenes in the realm of the spirit in all of these countries are going to have some similarities in the future. I do believe, and I believe it all revolves around God, Jesus Christ, and his plans for the future. But this is episode 29 of that Supernatural Talk podcast, and we have something to talk about. What's up, that Supernatural Talk podcast family? We are on episode 29 of that Supernatural Talk podcast. Look, great, great topic for today. As always, I'm going to jump into talking a little bit about presidents, countries, and how God is involved. And before I jump into this thing, obviously, if it's your first time watching, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, like and share because you care. Amen. But I want to introduce you guys to my co-hosts on this podcast today. We got glory boy number one behind the computer. We have Isaiah Poche Cotorial. Hola. Hello, family. Como estamos? And then we have glory boy two and a half. King's eyes rubbing his face behind the computer in our new not- podcast, not behind the computer, <laughs> <laughs> on the couch. Yes. In our new podcast setup. You like it? Yeah, there you go. The supernatural life. Yes, yes, yes. Family, we are here on that supernatural talk. Yes, we are. Yes, so, we are. So we got a new setup, as you guys can see. Got my mill plaque behind me. Millie, Millie. The Millie from the supernatural life. Soon, hopefully, this channel will be joining it in the Prophesy. near future. Because we're talking about awesome things every week. And I hope you guys really are enjoying it and you're growing more and more by listening and getting some valuable information that will help you be better every day in Jesus name. Um, I'm going to I believe Isaiah has a lot to say today and I'm going to tell you why he has information. Now, I came across a YouTube video of the El Salvadorian president who is a Christian who who talks about spiritual warfare stuff like that. Like he has been raised up in that country to do a lot of amazing things. I think El Salvador is one of the safest countries right now that you can live in, in the whole world. I mean, I think the murder rate is down. I think crime is down. I think a lot of things are changing because of the leadership of that country. Now there's no perfect leadership, but any leader that will glorify Jesus Christ is okay by me. Amen. So mm-hmm. El Salvador has experienced great things. I know Argentina. I don't know if that guy, I haven't done a lot of, um, I think his name's Javier Mille. I, I haven't done a lot of research on him, but I do believe that he is doing a great job in Argentina also, um, making a lot of the powers that be mad, not happy, which, you know. It happens. There is an agenda out there. There's a demonic agenda, but Jesus always has his trump card. No puns intended, but it is what it is. And I believe the United States of America is going to be experiencing some of that same amazing grace that we're seeing in countries like El Salvador. I'm optimistic, guys. I'm not a pessimist, okay? I don't see the negative. It isn't that I'm just all everything's rainbows and butterflies, but I do like to do my I like to do my best to see optimistically and to try to really see also prophetically um, what God is doing. And I think we're coming into a great season. That's what I believe. I'm not saying there won't be persecution trials, all that stuff that we come against, and you know the devil he's not going to be happy. But I believe a lot of good things are on the horizon. But Isaiah, what do you know about the El Salvadorian president? And and what do you what is it you like about what he is doing? Because I know you were talking to me, you said you've been keeping up with what he had been doing for a while. So you've been with him on his journey, right? Yeah, I, I, I actually saw when he had first got elected, and it was like a whole thing, even when that happening, and people look at him like, who's this young guy? Who's this dude on the new thing on the scene? And, um, but what stuck out, what stood out the whole time when I, I saw him come into power was that, like, he was putting Jesus at the forefront. But it wasn't in, like, a passive way. Like, for people that don't know, um, El Salvador is one of the homes for, like, one of the, where it was one of the homes of, like, the most dangerous, infamous gangs in the world. 
you might know him as MS-13 or Barrio 18 also. It's, um, MS-13 and then Barrio 18, which is 18th Street, which are actually rival gangs. And El Salvador, just like many other countries in Central and South America, were like the the wastelands of these gangs, and they'll run them through. So he comes into power, and like his first thing is like, we're going to clean this up. Like, it's, this, is, this is like a no tolerance towards the gangs. And like he came in with such a power, like such an authority, grabbed the military and the army that they had and like the police and like said, we're not going to be pushovers anymore. We're going to come through with the hand of God, with the grace of God and literally pushed them out. Like literally, like literally pushed them out, cleaned them out. The gangs. Literally. I've I've seen videos and Pastor Chewy, who's the head of the frontline ministry here in the, in the supernatural life. He was actually part of Barrio 18, which is 18th street, which is the rival gang of MS 13. And like, he would send me videos of like, Inmates like being washed with hoses, like being humiliated, like being told to like hold their arms a certain way, just to like to like crush the spirit of this gang of like this pride that the gang had so so tremendously. It's like how he did it was so strategic; it was crazy. But yeah, yeah, and he's forty two years old. He was born uh, from what I'm seeing here. He was born in nineteen eighty one, July twenty fourth, nineteen eighty one. He's forty two. Naib Bukele. I think is how you say his name. I could have butchered that. But, you know, just from what you said, Mm -hmm. you can't tolerate evil, Mm -hmm. period. If you give a little bit of room to evil, it'll come in and take completely over. That's what I've learned. And it it, it, it's like our way of the highway. There's no negotiation when you deal with evil. I mean, you look at Hitler. Hitler came over straight takeover, right? So, like, when you let evil leadership in, they allow evil things to come in, and it just – it's a huge mess. And this is what I believe about leaders over countries. What they contain is what the what their country is going to get, right? So when you see things taking place in certain places, it's because of what is flowing from the top. If it's majority – now, you might have a little thing here and there, but majority is usually something's flowing down from the top. So when you look at a country and you see certain things being allowed, it's because of the power that's running it. Some people are puppet presidents, and puppet presidents are getting told information from other places. So they're really not the ones running the country. The source is from somebody else. They're just set up to be the the figurehead. You know, kind of like we have countries with kings and queens that have no power today. They're just figureheads, right? Some places are like that with presidents in this day, prime ministers, whatever it may be, um, you know, emperors, rulers, whatever you call them, they are, some are figureheads. Some are just there. I think there's only one country that actually has a king and queen now that actually has power over the country, Liechtenstein or something like that. But anyway, that's a whole nother conversation. Um, But what is in the leader is what comes down. So what you're seeing is what is in this leader having a zero tolerance policy for evil for for the these gangs and these things mm-hmm. he said not in my country not in the place that i love not in the place that i grew up because i've seen what these gangs are doing I've seen how they're hurting people i see how they're hurting women and children i see how they're they have these money things going on these money rackets mm-hmm. how everything's wrong we're going to clean this up for the righteousness of jesus christ and what i like like i said about this guy is he is spiritual warfare minded he knows demons are behind these people mm-hmm. and he knows that the devil is moving their moving them with his lies and his their, his deception, and they're believing the lies so that we see what we have, right? Yeah, like, so, yeah literally, literally what you said, clean. Mm-hmm. Like he was literally, he was literally washing these dudes, like with hoses. It's prophetic. Like, literally washing them with hoses and making them walk in straight lines and like line up like kids, like in the prison where that they were running before. Mm. In, in those areas, in those countries, like... The inmates run the prison. Yeah. Like as much as, you know, here in the U.S., like inmates run the prison. No, like <laughs> the inmates run the prison. Literally, like they let people in and out. Like they're the ones controlling the food. Everyone, they're controlling. What's but not going. anymore. Not, but not anymore. Wow. You know, when I was, when I was a correctional officer, some of you may not know this, all the way back in 2006, um, I remember the inmates would come to me and say, Daniel, the only reason you go home is because we allow you to. Mm. And Here's the truth. I'm in a pod with 80-something, 100-something inmates. I had a pair of handcuffs and some pepper spray. Like, you think that's going to win if they really want to do do what they do? Nah. That's too fast. That happens way too fast. Ah, they take you out quick. But here's the thing about letting evil into a country is if you give a little leeway 
to to evil and you're a president or a leader of any organization, what happens is they will take that inch and go a mile. And that's when they start to gain power in certain vicinities. And then they start to make the person that gave them the leverage. Now you have to negotiate with the, the evil. You have to no negotiate with the leverage just to keep everything uh, copacet copacetic, copacetic. Copacetic, yeah, you got it. Yeah, copacetic to keep every keep everything, you know, in a good good way. So um, you get in that get in that way, and you think you're being the nice guy. You're you're helping these people. It, it's almost like in Mexico with the cartel and all that stuff. You know, it's he, the same gangs actually. Oh, it is. So yeah. yeah, you need you need to be you need to work with them. They're like, look, if you don't do this, we're gonna do this, this, and the third, right? Um, when we went to that refugee camp, the pastor said that there was heads on stakes waiting for him when he came in as a threat. Like, if you don't change, this is going to be you. So they use violence. They use evil to get their agendas done. And that's why I like it. I personally, me, my opinion should be yours too, is when we have leaders, presidents coming into power and removing the evil you should celebrate that because that means your family and your generations are going to be safe for some time. And you see that in actually the Old Testament with Israel. Israel Leaders arose up. They were pushing back the Baals and the Ishtars and the, you know, the prophets of Baal and all. They were being pushed out. Any of the idols were being removed. It says that this king rose up, removed the idols from the land and all of this stuff. And that is to get everything moving in accordance with the law of the Lord, you know, and to get everything moving the way it's supposed to be. And I believe that's going to come for America. I believe we're going to have a leader. I, I do believe we'll see the Don back in. And I believe he's going to clean up stuff. And, and the evil that has been there, the things that have money power in certain places don't want that to happen because they're going to lose their influence and they know that this man will come in and clean up the streets just like the El Salvadorian president mm -hmm. you know and it, you can say what you want guys it's the truth and the truth sets you free it's the truth we need righteous leadership to clean up this evil mess yeah. we do what do you think Keegan you haven't said nothing yet I want to let you Talk about the matter. Um, I was actually just researching this guy a little bit more. And what I love about him, and it honestly reminds me of my favorite president that's been in office. Um, not the one now, obviously, the one before who's coming back in Jesus' name. But it reminds me of him the a little bit. Yeah, the Don. That's what we'll call him, the Don. Um, you know, they're censoring stuff like crazy right now yeah, yeah. with the Go with what's going on. But um, I love because it was saying that he wasn't, part of the major political parties so mm -hmm. that there's a so in el salvador there's a huge leftist wing and then there was a right wing um and he was saying that he kind of came up out of nowhere like what isaiah was saying and he was more independent and so i really think that it's it's cool that he was able to come in and he carries that christ-like character as well and you know he doesn't have a political agenda you know, he's not led by by money, um, by influence. He's taking the bull um, by the reins. And that's what I love about him. And uh, I also found out, too, that his grandparents are actually Palestinian Christians. And yeah, they migrated I'm seeing that from, now. They migrated from Bethlehem to El Salvador in 1921. Wow. So I was sitting here thinking, I was like, man, this guy has probably come, like his, his, his generations, his bloodline has come from major oppression mm -hmm. and you know as well with the and the west bank in israel they started building the wall back in 2002 it's been up since 2005 nobody right now can go in and out of is uh of bethlehem and you know we've been to bethlehem we've we we've seen what it's like there so this guy probably knows what it's like to have that that oppression you know to to have a government where you know you're you're ran by um, you know, all the stuff that's going on, whether that be gangs, violence, um, you know, corrupt leaders, uh, even, even religion. And so I think it's really amazing that he's stepping in now and he's allowing Jesus to be the forefront and everything flows down. So when your leader has Christ at the center, you see prosperity in every single aspect and finances, you mm -hmm. know, and, 
and 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 everything. So I, that that's what I'm praying for that we get back to here in America. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I believe it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And I believe we're going to see some pretty amazing things, guys. We're going to see we're going to see Christians thrive again. Not only are we going to see make America great again, we're going to see Christianity thrive again because we're going to see it come back in a way. We're going to take out this 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 messy witchcraft mess um, by love. We're going to see love, the love of Christ come forth, cover multitude of sins, cast out fear, and people will know that Jesus is near. You know, it's the most holy and acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, I mean, it's going to be good, guys. And uh, there's a future and a hope for those who are in Christ. We don't have to live under oppression. No, none of you guys in different countries and stuff, you don't have to live under oppression. You don't. And I, I was talking a little bit about, you know, the Argentina president also. They actually called the guy Little T, you know, wow. because he he really loved what he was doing. And mm-hmm. it's like, make Argentina great again. That's his slogan. Wow. So, like, this guy is also there just doing crazy stuff. So it's funny, right? I remember when, when uh, the id hit, right, in 2020, mm-hmm. they were, like, popping up these leaders. And here comes these other leaders. Out of nobody, nowhere. So we wonder where we're in about stolen stuff. I'm gonna be careful, but stolen stuff. But mm-hmm. but God is ultimately. Let me give you guys some hope. God is in control. Amen. God is in control. He raises leaders up. He takes leaders down. And I've been talking about this even a little bit on the last podcast, but we're really talking about this because of the season that we're coming into. And I want to get people. I want to be a voice that has people's hopes high. I don't want you guys being scared, being fearful about what's to come and, you know, oh, this and that, my kids, my grandkids, put your hope in Christ. It really doesn't matter how the world is going. When you're in Christ, you'll be taken care of. He provides for the birds of the air. He clothes the flowers of the field. How much will he not do it for you? Even the flowers dressed in all their splendor, even greater than Solomon, right? I mean, amen. he loves you. He's dressed you up nice. Mm-hmm. So you'll be okay. Everything will be be okay. Be encouraged. But yeah, I was just, you know, I was reading about this guy. And I remember I was talking, you know, I was talking to Isaiah a little bit about this. And I was like, wow, this is, this is really cool. Really encouraged me that God is in the business of still raising up righteous rulers in the land. Mm-hmm. And the history of this guy, like Keegan just said, I was really looking at it too. I mean, there was even there was even Islam in his family, mm-hmm. so he even had that in there. And Roman Catholic, and Roman Catholic, and so Greek Orthodox, and Greek Orthodox. So this guy's got a lot of stuff going on, but he's I believe he's Holy Ghost filled. You don't talk about spiritual warfare, and you don't talk about demonic stuff unless you have the Holy Spirit, because mm-hmm. you understand there's a spiritual realm and there's other things at play. Uh-uh. You know, I don't think he would have. I don't think he would have been able to do what he did if he wasn't like Holy Ghost filled. Because a lot of those gangs, like MS-13 and 18th Street, they do, like, Santeria, like, heavy Santeria. Mm. So, like, the fact that he came in and did what he did, I feel like it was supernatural. It was, like, the battle between light and darkness. It, yeah. it has to be, because if you're not led by the Lord, them jokers will come and take you out, man. Mm-hmm. But that's what they were doing. They were running They were running the country, yeah. like, literally. Just like in Mexico, there's a lot of gangs that run cities. Yeah. Like, the, the police are non-existent in the city. Crazy, yeah. yeah, you got to have like a Holy Ghost force field around you. <laughs> the shadow of the Almighty, the protection of the Lord has to, to, to be really, really around you uh, when you come against these people. I mean, it's like El Chapo and all them guys, you know, mm-hmm. it's like like you don't mess with them people because you could disappear. But um, he's got Jesus. And then you know, you know what comes to my mind? A lot of these people, because I, I knew and I worked with a lot of people from El Salvador. And, like, a lot of them came because of how bad it was to live there. Like, my cousin died or this happened. My, I, I hear stories to this day from people that we know that people get killed and all the time. And it, it, I just had a thought in my mind. I was like, now that, you know, there's these beacons of light coming from these places that used to be completely dark, right? So, like, it was just the U.S. as this light shine, this light on the hill. Now we're getting little hills, little lights on hills. Now I'm thinking, okay, now people aren't just seeing America. They're seeing other places that are able to do this, that are also able to stand up for what's right and for, for the Lord. And, like, America won't be the only place to go to now. 
and like it'll be an encouragement that it's not just about America that there's other like other places in the world can also be equipped and also be um, established like like Argentina and El Salvador. Right. Yeah. But one thing I wanted to say too is that this guy got elected in 2019. So he saw what was going on in America and even with the Argentinian president who they call little T, like they saw what, you know, what America was doing. They saw what, you know, our previous president was doing, um, the Don. And, you know, I think it's amazing because then they were able to step in and, and be like, you know what, if this guy can do it, I can do it too. And they they literally followed um, in his footsteps with what he was doing. And so I think it's amazing that we're able to see this because they were like, you know what, maybe I'm not a political person, nor, you know, more or less, maybe I'm not this, even though this guy did have political backing and he was a mayor and all this stuff. But I really think that that encouraged them to be able to say, you know what, I am going to become president and I am going to make a change and I'm going to bring Christ to, you know, uh, politics in my country. I think it's, I think it's awesome that we're seeing this now. So does Christ and Christ and, uh, politics go together, Keeks? Oh, a hundred percent. The government shall be upon his shoulders. I, absolutely. I think that hmm. God has his hand in, in, in everything. He has his hand in everything. He has his hands in, in politics. He has his hands in, in war, even in military. Um, I think that he's always divinely orchestrating and strategizing things. And this is something that I struggle with for a long time. I actually, so in the last election, I was not Holy Ghost filled yet. I didn't get Holy Ghost filled till 2021. And I was so hung up and focused on the election. Like I was, I was crazy on it. And I was so angry. Well, I was Holy Ghost filled and I was hung up on it. I think <laughs> it was just a whole diluted spirit or something yeah. going on there. Yeah. I mean, I, w I remember I was so angry. I was so upset. I said, God, how could you ever allow this to happen? I said, you know, they, it was, it, they cheated. Like I'm so, I was so, so mad. I was like, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm moving out of the country. <laughs> I wanted to do that. I was looking at jobs outside the country and I was, I was getting ready to graduate college and you know, the vid was going on. It was just so much, but, um, the Lord spoke to me though recently and he was like, Keegan, look at the old Testament, look at who I had in place. And he said, you know, King Ahab, and I would love for you to teach on this too. Uh, sorry to, to expand on this, that, you know, Ahab was king of Israel. Mm -hmm. He was king. God put him as king. He was there and he was a horrible, horrible king. Mm, Corrupt. Worst. He was a puppet. He was a puppet of Jezebel. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing the same thing now. But what happened? What happened? A Jehu came. Mm -hmm. He wasn't a he, he he wasn't in, you know, royalty, wasn't in, you know, part of the king or queen's family, right? He wasn't he he was he was a soldier. He was a soldier. And a prophet came and anointed him as king, and he came and took over. And he got, you know, he he destroyed Jezebel and the whole family. And so I really think that we're seeing that happen in modern time today right now amen so guys there's a future and a hope i mean i just saw that and i was like wow i really love what god is doing and i see there's righteous leaders in the land i know that some people are always screaming about end times and stuff guys and we are in the last days we are in the end times but it's a lot of work to be done, and the Lord is about souls, and He wants souls to be saved, and He wants people going to heaven, or He wouldn't have sent His one and, one and only begotten Son to come and do what He did and die the death that we deserved, and He rose again, and here we are with the free gift of salvation if we accept it. Amen? So anyway, guys, this has been episode 29 of That Supernatural Talk podcast. I pray that you guys have been encouraged. You know that there's hope on the horizon that you don't have to be led by an Ahab. You get to be led by real kings and real ki queens in the kingdom of God. That means presidents and rulers that have Jesus Christ on the inside. They're kings and priests, and we get to let, be led by people like that because they are a royal priesthood just like us. We are kings and priests in God's kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All glory to Jesus Christ. Guys, before we end episode 29 of that Supernatural Talk podcast, you know who I got to give it over to. I'm going to give it over here to Keeg Zeiss. He's going to close us out, and he's going to tell you what everything is all about. So take it away, Keeg's. 
Thank you, That Supernatural Talk family, for watching episode 29. We can't believe you've been sticking with us so far, but we hope you're enjoying it. And hey, I want you guys to comment down below what you think about all this. Comment down below if, if you have similar testimonies, stories, what you think about what's going on in America, El Salvador, Argentina. We'd love to hear from you guys, and we'd love to comment uh, with you guys in the comment section. So make sure you guys comment down below and as well as liking and sharing this video. And another and other ways that you guys can support us as well is by going to the links in the description. By clicking on those links, you're gonna see a couple different ones. One way is joining this channel. That is right, and it's one of my favorite ways to be involved here with That Supernatural Talk podcast because weekly, weekly we put out exclusive behind the scenes videos, things that we would never ever talk about on the main podcast. We talk on there, they're crazy hilarious and out just I can't even describe this last behind the scenes podcast episode it was so crazy so make sure you guys become a member you guys can do that by joining the channel and the link below also for all of you guys listening on our other platforms such as Spotify Apple podcast you guys can click the link on Buzzsprout which is our hosted website and you can become a monthly donor on there and last but certainly not least you can become a forerunner. That's right. Go to www.thesupernaturallife.org and become a forerunner. You get access to everything. You get access to everything in the ministry, exclusive uh, forerunner teachings, all of our all of our schools on the fivefold ministry, our prophetic school, pastoral school, deliverance schools, all that stuff. You get access to a local hub near you where you get trained and equipped in all things supernatural. Make sure you guys become a forerunner. Get discipled and uh, grow in that call on your life in Jesus' name. But that's it for episode 29. We love you guys. Thank you for partnering with us. Thank you for sewing into us. Links to sew are in the description as well. And, uh, you know, we got to be funded here in the kingdom to keep on going and spread the gospel. So thank you guys for all that you do and for partnering and sewing into that Supernatural Talk podcast. We'll see you soon for episode 30.